the earlier classes we have seen uh, the basic nature of pressure pressure decreases as you go up okay pressure decreases with altitude we all know that so when we are flying near sea level our plane will perform very well higher altitudes the performance of our aircraft will be decreasing all right that is why the big planes they have turbine engines we fly cessnas which have propeller engines these propeller engines in a cessna can take the aircraft only to a height of 10 to 12000 feet for a cessna 152 for a cessna 172 maybe a 1000 or a 2000 feet higher but if you want to go to higher altitudes like 20000 feet 30000 feet you need a jet engine which are called turbine engines all right so we'll be studying those things when we study about aircraft technical all right so yeah this is the chart that we looked upon yesterday uh, are you guys able to see the screen which i am sharing all right yes sir okay so you have to learn this table this is a similar table which i send you on your whatsapp too pressure at 5000 feet 850 hectopascals 10000 feet 700 this will vary on a day to day basis but this is a standard as per isa international standard atmosphere is what says this all right yesterday we looked about you know how the pressure will change with change in uh, sorry how your true altitude and your indicated altitude will vary this is what we saw yesterday right how your true altitude and your indicated altitude will vary uh in high pressure things will be different in low pressure things will be different in high temperature low will be uh, things will be different in low temperature things will be different so you guys understood this thing yesterday both of you guys mehul and vidisha high to low look down below low to high you are up in the sky all right yes sir ye to samajh aa gaya to sir Now see this diagram. Try to understand this diagram. In ISA, one point five kilometer altitude corresponds to a pressure of eight sixty four hectopascals, and two kilometer to seven ninety five hectopascals. See in figure two point four. That is above. when the aircraft flies into a column of warm air from 864 hectopascal level the pressure being lower over warmer column will have the same pressure at a higher level say at 2 km hence the altimeter will indicate an altitude lower than the true altitude all right this will confuse you just stick to what i have taught you yesterday all right don't worry about this what they say in the book all right results of this type can be related to wind also all right now what will happen if there is high pressure and low pressure system there will also be a wind i don't understand yes sir you are traveling from high pressure to low pressure so the wind will also travel from high pressure to low pressure if you are flying from so if you are try if you are flying from let me show you let's say you are flying from high pressure to low pressure okay you are flying this way so you have a tailwind because wind also flows from high pressure to low pressure right low pressure so you have a tailwind a wind hitting from your back if you are flying from low pressure to high pressure then what kind of wind you will encounter was it yeah you will it is called a headwind okay if a wind comes from your opposite direction it's called a headwind if it comes from your backward direction it is called a tailwind make sense okay. all right yes sir vidisha is it okay yes sir now see this 
Now there are two parts of the aircraft. One is called port, one is called starboard. You should know this. Let's say this is your aircraft. All right. The left side of your aircraft is called port. Yeah. And right side is called starboard. Now, how will you remember this? Right side of the starboard. 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 Okay. Left is port. Right is starboard. Now, how you, you will remember this? Just, rem just remember, stars are always right. You know, film stars, whatever they say is right, considered by the people as right. They may be wrong. So that is how you. Stars are always right. So right wing, starboard. Left wing, starboard. I had a tough time. I had a tough time remembering this for a couple of years in the beginning. Then I came out this with formula. Stars are always right. So now I remember it. So you see this here. For port drift, wind is from right to the left. Obviously. If wind is blowing from right, this is your aircraft, let's say. Wind is coming from right to left. Okay. And what will this call? Port drift. Because you are drifting towards the left side. For port drift, wind is from right to left in the northern hemisphere. Low is to the left of the wind and high is to the right. That is why it is flowing from left to right because, sorry, from right to left because the high pressure is on the right, low pressure is on the left. So wind is blowing from right to left. So there will be a port drift. Make sense? High pressure is a low pressure wind. Wind always blows from a high pressure to low pressure. Okay, okay. If the aircraft is moving from left to right, is kamatla kya what? Left to right. Left to right, then it will be a starboard drift. Make sense? If the wind is coming this way, what kind of drift it will be? So it's start, start board, star board view. The northern hemisphere, the low pressure is always to the left and high pressure is on the right. We'll be studying this. It's called Bayes Bellard's law. This Bayes Bellard's law would say in the northern hemisphere, you know, high pressure system is on the right and low pressure system is on the left so wind blows from high pressure to low pressure so always if you are flying in northern hemisphere there will be a port drift okay All right. now now you see if the aircraft is moving from low to high then the altimeter will under it. Low to high, you are up in the sky. Again, they have confused it here. Let me explain you with my diagram. It's a little confusing here. All right. So aircraft. The right is port or starboard, Mehul. The right side. Right side, sir, is starboard. So it's SB and it's P. All right, right sir. And 
So let's say uh, we have to see where the aircraft is going. If the aircraft is going in this direction, let's say here is high pressure, here is low pressure. All right. If the aircraft is going to the right direction, then what will happen? Aircraft is going from low to high. Low to high, you are up in the sky. That means. That means. Low to high, you are up in the sky. That means aircraft is yes. Your aircraft is higher, but your altimeter is under reading. Under reading, yes. And let's say if you flew this side, you are flying from high to low. High to low, look down below because you are there is over reading. Over reading, and you are over reading. That is what it is trying to say. All right. That is what yes, they are. Saying. Same thing that we discussed yesterday. So it depends on which direction you are going, right or left. Okay. So they will ask you. Okay, you are going from here to here. Then your altimeter will under read or over read. You have to tell. Okay. If your true altitude is more, your indicated is less. If your indicated yes, is more, your true is less. Indicated, indicated altitude means altimeter. Indicated altitude is yes, more. Sir. Altimeter is over reading. Altimeter is showing. Less means altimeter is under reading. And yes, true sir. altitude is the actual altitude at which your plane is present. Okay, but yes, altimeter will. False indicate because they don't have low pressure and high pressure system correction method with them. Okay, yes. some instruments in a big aircrafts which do, uh, you know, fix it. But our normal conventional uh, altimeter in a Cessna, which we'll be flying for training, doesn't have any correction, so it will false read. So we, as a pilot, have to do auto correction. All right. Next is pressure systems. Now, uh, yeah, this is a diagram that you need to make and you need to understand. This will be there with you for the rest of your life. What I am teaching today will be there for you for the rest of the life. So please draw this. All right. High pressure. What does high pressure mean? High pressure means high in the middle. Okay. If high in the middle, then low in the out. So this is how a high pressure system looks like. All right. So what we can say. high pressure system high pressure system is all about divergence high pressure system is all about sinking air high pressure system is all is called anti cyclone high pressure system or clockwise direction you see the winds are flowing in clockwise directions elongated area of high pressure is called ridge all right high pressure system divergence what is divergence divergence means you get accumulated at one place and from here you diversify somebody goes here somebody goes here somebody goes there okay you get scattered is to diversify okay so high pressure system divergence sinking air air will not rise as you diverge you'll sink 
okay anti cyclone it is called anti cyclone that's the name for it clockwise direction can you see in northern hemisphere yes sir northern hemisphere this is what will happen in northern hemisphere so uh, clockwise direction in an edge is northern hemisphere because india is in northern hemisphere we take northern hemisphere as the example for everything but tomorrow let's say if you go and fly it in south africa things will change all right yes will change for you it will be anti clockwise for you okay all right so let's talk about northern hemisphere now if you go to us again it will be northern hemisphere so it will be exactly same if you go to uk it will be exactly same as it is in india but if you go to any country like australia new zealand or south africa then things will change but first let's study about india We're talking about india so india clockwise direction of flow of air ridge what is ridge elongated area of high pressure is called ridge okay ridge is a elongated of high pressure high pressure high pressure high pressure so it's making a big school of high pressure so that's called ridge okay now next is a low pressure system so should i clear this drawing have you already drawn this mehul have you drawn this yes sir or it's somewhere in your copy or in your book itself because uh, book mein likh le get misplaced so you can also draw it in your book somewhere yeah okay next let's talk about low pressure so okay so that means low pressure in the middle comparatively higher outside Okay, can you see this? What is happening? Hmm? This is low pressure system. Okay, so low pressure system. What was the first thing that we wrote in high pressure system? What was the first point? Divergence, right? Here, can you see the air is coming and accumulating at a place that is called convergence. So, converging air. All right. Then, once it converges at a place, it rises. So, rising. Rising. convergence rising air okay what is next it is called cyclone okay anti clockwise direction air flow low pressure system converging air rising air cyclone anti clockwise direction and elongated area of low pressure is called trough oh. elongated area of low pressure is called trough All right, makes sense. 
प्रेशर सिस्टम कन्वर्जिंग एयर राइजिंग एयर साइक्लो ऑन एंटी क्लॉक वेज डायरेक्शन ट्रफ ऑल राइट सो दिस इज वॉट दे ट्राइंग टू शो यू see this diagram can you see yes sir this is anti cyclone system which is also called a high pressure system on the right on the left is a low pressure system which is a cyclone yes, sir an elongated area of low pressure system this is a trough elongated area of high pressure system this is a ridge so how you will know it is a trough for a ridge you see in a trough the low is in the middle and it is surrounded by high pressure in high pressure high is in the middle and then next is decreasing 1004 1002 1000 it is decreasing outside so it is a high pressure system. next the gap between two isobars these are lines of isobars isobars are line connecting places of equal pressure so if you see high pressure system there will be a greater gap between two isobars but if you see a low pressure system then the gap will be much less okay and it will be a narrow kind of a patch and what high is iso high pressure will be a broad patch and a trough will be a narrow patch okay as you can see in the diagram sir what is isobar isobar is a line now this is a line see this line yes sir that from this place to this place the pressure is 998 hectopascals so this is yes, called a isobar it is showing you a region where there is same pressure now this line shows that here the pressure is 1000 hectopascals this is again a isobar of 1000 hectopascals this is a isobar of 1002 hectopascals yes sir all right makes sense similarly in the high pressure yes sir one more thing okay okay there is one more thing uh, one is called backing and one is called veering you can also add there one line below the things wind backs in a low pressure in a low pressure wind backs and in a high pressure wind veers okay so wind backs in low pressure ah uh, winds back in a low okay and wind veers v double e r s wind veers in a high so what is backing backing is this anti cyclonic flow anti cyclonic flow of air is also called backing and uh, sorry cyclonic flow which is in the anti clockwise direction this anti clockwise direction movement is called backing and this clockwise direction movement is called veering all right yes this movement this movement is called veering clockwise direction anti clockwise direction this movement is called backing so you can add it there in your notes all right now see this diagram there is a ridge which means this is a area of high pressure is a trough wind wears means low pressure oh sorry can you see it now C figure two point seven. There is an area of low pressure. There is an area of high pressure. Then again here there is an area of low pressure and there is an area of high pressure. Can you see the four areas? High, low, low, high. Okay. 
When a high pressure is cancelled out by a low pressure and another high pressure is cancelled out by another low pressure, then there is an area where the, everything is at zero. Everything is that null. There is no high pressure, there is no low pressure. That area is okay. called call. You can underline this. That area is called call. Call is a region enclosed between two high pressure and two low pressure. Area of null is called call. So you can underline this. Call is a region enclosed between two highs and two lows. Okay, now see, it says see synoptic systems. See synoptic system that is high pressure and low pressure systems at appendix J. And met scales and divisions at appendix N. So let's go and have a look. Appendix J and appendix N. Synoptic scale generally covers large area, example, extra tropical cyclones, troughs and ridges, frontal zones, and jet streams. Okay, don't worry right now. It is not applicable to you right now. Let's also check Appendix J, what it says. Okay, yes. Mm -hmm. you, have, you will have to learn all these. Cyclone. Wind flow in upper levels associated with any low pressure system in which wind flow is counterclockwise. Counterclockwise means anti clockwise in the northern hemisphere and clockwise in the southern hemisphere is called cyclone. Anti cyclone wind flow in upper levels associated with high pressure system. The wind flow is clockwise in the northern hemisphere and counterclockwise in the southern hemisphere. So don't worry about southern hemisphere, just learn about northern hemisphere now. Okay, so what is a cyclone? Cyclone is an area of low pressure that has anticlockwise circulation of air. Okay, what is anticyclone? It is an area of high pressure that has wind flow of clockwise direction. Okay, all right. Just cover cyclone and anticyclone for now. Uh, others we'll cover later when we come to you know. Uh, wind systems and pressure systems of India, then we'll cover deep depressions, cyclonic storm, troughs, induced low, easterly wave, high pressure area, shear lines, wind discontinuity. Okay. So there are a lot of things. There are a lot of technical things that you need to know. If you just read it flat, just read the questions just read the chapter and do the questions you will be able to get through with the exams but in order to become an airline pilot each and everything each and every minute detail should be there inside your mind that is when you get an airline job okay so you have you are not here to become a good pilot right guys you're not here to good a good pilot. Why are you here? To be a knowledgeable pilot. To be a knowledgeable pilot. Okay. Yes, Isha, why are you here? Are you here to become a good pilot? Come on, come on. Yes. No, you're not here to become a good pilot. You are here to become one of the best pilot. Study with that attitude. My trainer told me, I'm not teaching you to become good or very good. 
i am teaching you to become one of the greatest whose name is there in the history whose name is there in the books of aviation study with that attitude